Welcome to this video on how to draw still life in pastel pencil with me, Emily Rose. This guide is absolutely perfect if you're brand new to pastel pencils or to doing still life drawings. In this tutorial, I'm gonna take you through a secret that not many artists share and is something that will propel your drawing forward so quickly so that you can make realistic drawings every single time, whether that is for still life or for something a little bit more complicated like animals and people. So. There'll be a full materials list for you down below. Materials will pop up on the screen for you. I'm using light blue Clairefontaine pastel matte paper. You will want some crystal paper just to stop you smudging your work, which means you can rest your hand over the top and the work underneath is nicely protected. I use a scalpel to sharpen my pencils with and I have a tutorial on that again linked down below. And the last thing to mention of course is a putty rubber. This is a Faber-Castell putty rubber, absolutely love them, they last four years. So if you're ready to get cracking, let's learn how to draw still lives in pastels. So to start your still life, you want to begin by planning where the darkest darks are going to be going for your drawing. You might have heard this technique being used before and it works extremely well. It means that we can very quickly get your subject established and make sure that it has a good form, which means the 3D structure. So what you need to look for are the shadows. You're looking for the darkest areas and the easiest way to do this is to take your photo, take your reference photo and turn it to black and white. So you need to try and block them out. You might have seen this being done in academic style of drawing so you'll notice that I block things out quite geometrically at this stage. By using straight lines as a general instead of lots of sweeping curves you will be much more accurate in the placement of these shadows. Now again because these shapes are quite simple it won't matter too much if your shadows are not quite in the right place. I'm using the 283 to start with here and you'll see that this is a very red, deep brown pencil. And you might think it's a bit of an odd choice to use for an orange, but this is where that secret that I just told you about comes in. So the secret is to use warm and cool colors. This is really important. All professional artists use this for realism. And it's another way to add more form to your drawings. So the form or the structure, as I've said, is that 3D shape that you're trying to create. And you would usually just use your light and dark for that, as you would if you just had a pencil, an ordinary graphite pencil. But as we're working in color, you can use color temperature, warm and cool, to help create a better form. Basically, what is creating the illusion of shape, of light and dark and shadow is the difference from one area to another. So we're going in here with this very dark pencil and then if I put a lighter pencil over on the other side that difference tells us the light is hitting here, the shadow's here and we start to get that rounded shape. That's great and it can take you quite far but if we stack something else, another different element onto that, then we're creating a bigger difference from one area to the next. We're saying this is totally opposite to this area. And I'm gonna show you that, not just by making this darker, but by also making it a different temperature. You could do this in so many different ways. If you found a way to use your medium differently, you could use it in one way for a dark area and in a different way for the lighter area. And you start to build up the differences to really show the contrast between those two areas. It's quite a simple idea, but it's something that a lot of artists don't talk about and leaves students feeling quite confused. So, I've picked to go warm in my shadows. This is red. Um, it's a brown red, but it's a red. The reason for that is orange as a color doesn't work too well if you try and make it cool. Because if you make it cool, and I'll show a color wheel on the screen here, we're gonna go towards yellow, and yellow is a really weak color. So if we try and make yellow darker, we just get brown. If we make the orange warmer, we go towards red. And the red works slightly better at these darker temp um, at these darker tones, as you can see here. We still have some color, but it's quite dark. So that's how I've chosen to go warm in my shadow, and I'll be going cooler towards yellow for the lights. And you'll see that it will make a really big difference um, to this drawing, and it will make it feel much, much more rounded. So I'm sweeping my pencil 
on and off the page as I do this. I'm working up in light layers. The reason being, we will be mixing other colors into the same area. So I try and move my pencil before it hits the paper and then continue that movement while it leaves the paper so that I get these really soft edges. So you can see I'm sweeping it backwards and forwards. Towards the edges of the shadows, I'm not adding as many layers so that obviously it becomes lighter. So there is a slightly faint shadow in here. Just sweep this over the top. Before I'm done with this pencil, something that is very characteristic of oranges is that pitted peel, the skin, and it does look like skin. So I'm going to start to create a bit of that texture right at this beginning stage. So working in the darker side of my shape, not in the lighter side, I'm just going to start to, again, move my pencil before it hits the page, and then continue moving it while it leaves the page, but in these very, very small motions and start to create these small little um, dots, almost like a pattern. But what you want to avoid is a repeating pattern. You want to try and make this nice and random. That's going to make it feel much, much more natural. So I'm just almost ticking with the pencil. You can see the pencil's nice and blunt. That's gonna help me get these um, very softly in. The harder you put them in, the more difficult it's going to be to make sure that these little pits actually look like they're part of the fruit later on. If you go in with lots of hard lines, you'll find that these will look stuck on instead of a part of the skin. So that's why I put a couple of um, strokes in one area and I'm just softly going over with those next couple of strokes. The first stroke is a bit harder and then more lightly over the top to make sure I have some nice soft edges to it. So I'm almost done with this stage. So you can see I've just added more of that pitting effect in exactly the same way. So that is our darkest tone and we've blocked it in. It's very basic at this stage. From here, I'm going to move to my mid-tones. So there are two pencils that you could use. I'm going to opt for the 187. Um, it's a little bit darker than the 186, but you could use either of them. If you don't have the 187, by all means take the 186. And using the pencil in a very similar way, I'm going to start sweeping it on and off the page. Now what you'll notice is I'm already going over the edges of the shadow that we've just put down in the previous step. So again, working in those light layers, I'm starting to add a border over the top of the shadow and starting to join them together quite quickly. Another technique that you could try with your pencil is to use it on the side. You can see the way that I sharpen my pencils, I get a lot of pastel out. And this way you can cover a large area and use it more like you would a pastel block. So you can see for the mid-tone, I'm not paying so much attention to my color temperature. I'm going in with an orange now so that the general color of my fruit is correct. But for the extremes, for the lightest lights or for the darkest darks, that's where we're adjusting the temperature of our color and we're moving either left or right around the color wheel. So again, notice that at the edges of where I'm putting this color, I'm making sure that the edges are nice and soft so that I can work into them with another color and start to join them together, just as we have done over in the shadows. So I'm just glazing over the top of the edge of this shadow work and blending it together. So I'm now going to block in the area of light. So when I say block in, this is just the initial stage. It's the first pass. You would imagine this first stage to look very rough and very um, messy. If at all you're trying to go into details at this stage and trying to start to refine it too much, you're jumping ahead a few steps and it will actually produce um, a flatter drawing by the end. At the beginning stages, we really want to be establishing where the most important areas of light and dark are instead. So you can see for the lighter area, I've gone straight in very boldly with 184, which is very much a yellow. So obviously the contrast between all three tones at the moment and all three different colors is quite high. They're not sitting together very nicely at this stage. And your underpainting should look a bit like this, no matter what you're doing, whether it's still life or if you're working on something a bit more complicated like an animal. 
You want to distill your subject down to its simplest form, down to those very bare building blocks at this stage. Again, notice that I'm still moving the pencil on and off the page to get those really soft edges. That is a core pastel pencil technique for you to practice there. So now that we've got the building blocks in, we're going to start to adjust um, the transitions from one tone to the next. We're going to start to work um, from the shadow into the mid-tone to begin with. And of course, we need to think about two things. We need to think about the tone, darker to lighter, but we also need to think about that color temperature change from more red to the orange. So I'm going in with this 188. It's a nice coral color, and it's a bit lighter than the 283, which we've used for the shadows. You can see it's still got a really good amount of red pigment in there, so it's going to retain that warmer shadow. But being lighter, it sits next to the 187 much better. So I'm going to start by working this around the edges, those transitioning areas. And I keep looking at my photo and you'll often find that the transitions from the shadow into the mid-tones are quite saturated. They've got quite a lot of colour to them. So it's a really good idea to just take a look at your reference photo and see which colours are apparent in those transitional areas. So again, I'm sweeping the pencil on and off the page. This is effectively blending my tones and colours together for me. I don't need to pick up an actual um, blending tool to do that. This is the way I much prefer to work and so for um, flat subjects like your still life uh, fruits, working on the pastel paper makes life much easier because the paper will allow you to blend your layers together um, more than the board. The board has a thicker tooth to it which means it holds onto your pastel um, much harder than the paper will. I'm just going to bring a little bit more of this colour over the top of my shadow. I can see it in the photo, so I'm going to add it into my drawing. And there's a little bit of light catching just here, the depression underneath the orange. It's just a little bit of cast light. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go back in again. And this is how I always work with pastel pencils and would encourage you to as well. So this is my original pencil, the 283. And again, I'm sweeping it on and off the page and it's allowing these pastel colors to blend together. So I'm going back over the top. I'm now filling in the depth of that shadow, the core shadow. I'm making sure I can't see any of that card coming through at all. And that is a really common mistake I find for beginner uh, pastel pencil artists is that they don't fill in the tooth of the card fully. The tooth just means the grain. So if you can see the color of your card coming through at all, it means you haven't fully filled in the grain of that card. So I'm going over and making sure that it's fully filled in so that my fruit is going to be really solid. Again, sweeping the pencil on and off the page is allowing those layers to blend together. Okay, so already the fruit is starting to look much more solid. That is thanks to the fact that I filled in the tooth of the card in that shadow. So do remember that. It's a really, really important part of drawing um, still lives in pastel pencils. You must make sure you're filling in the tooth of the card. So that was with the 188. I'm just gonna pick up that 187, which is our orange once more, and put a slightly thicker layer down, just around that 188. So we need to start working from the orange towards that yellow. So I need to get lighter, and I need to get cooler. So I'm gonna start off with the 113. And this is almost like a neon orange. It's a very bright pencil. It's very highly saturated as well. So just a quick aside here for all of you budding artists, this is another really important thing that loads of people don't teach, is when there is more light, you will get more color. This might sound a bit obvious, but unless you stop and think about it, you can find yourself using very light in tone pencils, but pencils that haven't got a lot of colour to them. And then you struggle to get the intensity, the vibrancy that you need in your subject. So you need to pay attention not just to the tone of your pencil, which is the light and dark, but also how much colour there is in that pencil and how relevant that pencil therefore is for your reference photo and the area you're filling in. The areas that I'm going into have a lot of colour to them, but they are lighter 
better. So again, I'm going to sweep the pencil on and off the page. I know you must be sick of hearing me say that by now. And I'm going to start glazing over that 187. When I'm glazing over something, I'm putting a lighter layer over the top. And what it's allowing us to do is see a little bit of this bright orange. And we're also getting a glimpse of some of the darker orange underneath. We get a nice little mix of the two. I'm working this into the lighter side of the orange. So not so much over on this side where there is less light. And I'm starting to go over the edges and into that yellow. Again, you can see I'm using the flat of the pencil so that I get a really soft and broad edge to work with. If you're interested to find out how I sharpen these pencils, there is a little tutorial um, on my YouTube channel and I show you how to do that. So again, look at the intensity that's now coming out of this drawing. There's just a little raised area over here that's catching a bit more light. So I can show that by putting this more intense orange over there where there is more color, there is more light. And sure enough, that starts to pull it forwards towards us. So the last place that we need to work into for this step, which is um, the transitions from tones, we're adding an extra layer, an extra pencil to help round our form out, is of course the lit area. So you can see I'm going in with an orange, uh, sorry, a yellow, the 106. And this is again, because we want those cooler colors in the lit areas, you can see how much of a difference it's creating across this fruit. There is not just dark, it's red. This is not just light, it's yellow. They are getting more and more different, which I know can sound very basic, but it is something that a lot of artists just don't share with their students. And then students are left feeling that they're missing some incredible um, trick or something, um, something is missing in their technique and they're just simply not as good. Whereas actually it can be really quite simple, just a little bit of art theory that's missing so just lifting the pencil really lightly to ensure that it's nicely transitioned out I think I need a bit more yellow coming further down so I'm going to use the pencil on the side I'm not going to press as hard and that's making it really really soft so you could do this for anything any kind of fruit at all and it would work really really well. It's heading around really lightly with the pencil and you can see it's become really nice and smooth and soft. So just before I carry on, I'm gonna take my putty rubber. Um, this is a Faber-Castell putty rubber. I'm not sponsored by any of the materials. It's just so that you know what I'm using in case you'd like to get the same materials for the same result. And I'm just gonna run this around the edge and clean up my drawing before I carry on. And this is something I would encourage you to do on any drawing. Um, the excess pastel can really quickly get stuck into your card and then ruin a piece of work when you get to the end and realize one of the smudges just won't come out. To put the highlight in, and this isn't the last stage, but to put the highlight in, I'm actually gonna use two different pencils, but you don't need to. You can just use the 103 from Faber-Castell, which is this one. I'm also going to be adding to the mix the 042 from Karen Dash. And this is mainly because the type of pencil that Karen Dash make is very soft. And that can be really nice at this stage to get those very smooth transitions, but also, the, um, the lightest area, the brightest reflection is right over here on the left. The reflection does continue around, but as it comes further around on my photo, it gets a little bit warmer. And this is where this pencil obviously comes in. You can see in times of temperature, this one is cooler than the Caran d'Ache. So I'm gonna start off with the cooler of the two. And I'm going to work first into the most obvious area that I can see in my reference photo, which is the brightest area. Again, I'm sweeping the pencil on and off the page, but now you can see that there is dust on the page because there is quite a lot of pastel down. So I'm working in smaller um, marks and I'm allowing little gaps to form so that we start to get a little bit more texture back into the skin of the fruit, which I will be adding to um, in the next step. So for this slightly warmer area over towards the shaded side of the fruit, as I said, I'm going in with this warmer pencil, the 042 from Karen Dash. And you can see that this, instead of making it particularly much brighter than the color underneath, it's just changing the temperature so that we have a difference there, but it's not necessarily in tone. This is softening out that reflection. 
and it's leading us around the other side of the fruit really, really nicely. So I'm gonna come a bit further down with small little motions like we did in that first stage to start bringing some of the pitted quality to the skin of our fruit. Now, once again, my pencil is nice and blunt for this and that is really important. So I'm gonna put a few pitted marks around the edges of that section and then pick up my lighter pencil. Of course, if you've only got this pencil, then you'll be using this for all of the areas. Now I'm trying to keep this just to the lit side of my orange. I don't want this to travel further around because then the, the orange will actually start to look very flat. So once you've put something in like that, we're gonna to start to work through our other colors. We will um, come back and finesse these, because obviously at the minute they look like they've been stuck on. So I'm now picking up that 106, and I'm going to start to add some little marks in. These weave in and out of some of those um, 103 markings, that ivory, and they also come a little bit further down. So I'm gonna do the same up at the top, so we're just gradually stepping our way down through the tones and the temperatures as well. Working backwards again, the 113. So again, I'm gonna weave this into the edge of some of that um, 106 lemon yellow, and then bring it a little bit further down. Now on camera, these ones will be harder to see. That's because the difference between this pencil and what's underneath, of course, isn't that great, because what is underneath is actually some of this 106, but it's also mixed with the slightly darker orange um, from that first pass. So. These will show up in person, but it's going to be more of a difference in color, in saturation than anything else. So it is worth adding this step, particularly as I say, in person, it shows up nicely. I'm also going to dab some of this over the edges of the orange and that 188. The 188 was the very intense burnt coral color. There's a tiny bit of yellow that I'm just seeing at the back here. So I'm gonna add that in with the 184 because it's a little bit darker, of course, than the lemon yellow, that 186. I'm just not gonna press very hard, but there is some reflected light. And lastly, I'm going to take the 187. And bring a little bit of that carefully into the edges of the shadow. Now, another tip, you don't want to add too many details into your shadows. Shadows in general shouldn't have too many details in them because of course, not a lot of light is getting in there. So where the shadow is turning slowly, just around this area, we get some soft details, but the core shadow especially, there just isn't anything in there. So you want to refrain from putting details in because as opposed to making your work look absolutely fantastic, it will flatten it because it's saying that light is getting to this area and that will flatten your 3D structure that we've worked really hard to create here with tone and temperature. Okay, so you've done that and you think, mm, it doesn't really look very good, but there's a really simple last step for you. Um, so just take a clean finger and start to tap over the top. I would start in the lightest areas and then you won't be contaminating these areas with your darker tones. And what this does is gently mix these layers, these top markings into the layers beneath. It just softens them out. So I'm just heading all the way around, really just going up and down. As soon as you start going round and round, um, you're blending them together and you'll get rid of the details. Okay, so you remember the little pits that we put in at that first stage. What we're gonna do is take the 184 and very lightly, I'm hardly pressing at all, I'm just going to head around the left-hand side in a clumsy sort of semicircle, around the left-hand side of those darker marks. And this is just going to give us some slightly larger pits in our orange peel. I'm really hardly pressing with this pencil. And of course, we're gonna do exactly what we did before, and tap around them. <laughs> to 
finish our orange hanging from its branch, we just need to give it a little stalk and I'll give a nod to the leaves around it as well. So it's going to be a nice artistic finish. It's not going to be every, anything that makes it too wooden and structured. So I'm going to start with my 170. If you don't have this one, you could just take the 168 straight away and vice versa. And I'm going to fill in the stalk now what you'll find is, especially on camera, you'll be like, oh, the green didn't appear to show up straight away. Now the reason for that is because the tone of this green, how light and dark it is, is very similar to the board, um, but of course it's only different in color, which means it joins the uh, orange into the board quite quietly for us, which is absolutely brilliant. So we'll start off by just marking that area out and we'll have the stalk disappearing off. And then I'm going to take my 168, which is a bit darker, and start to give myself a little bit of shadow to this so that it joins into the orange. We'll be going one shade darker as well. Remember that the light is coming over from the left, so I'm going to put a bit of a shadow in on the right hand side. And then take the 267. There is a particular shadow right over here, as you would expect, because of course, as I've said, the light's coming in from the left. So there's a good shadow on the right. We will blend that in and make it sit next to the orange very quietly so that our attention is not on the stalk. Again, you can see I'm brushing my pencil lightly over the top of marks that I make, and it's just helping them blend in with the rest of the pastel there. Okay, so to help the um, the green blend in to the orange, now the green and the orange are almost complementary colours, which means they're direct opposites. So they won't want to blend together too happily to make a nice colour, but they will become sort of sludgy and quiet. I'm taking the 187 and using it really, really lightly. I'm moving it in small circles and you can see it's blending it together. As a last touch to our little stalk, I'm taking the pencil that we've already used on our orange, the 103, and I'm not pressing very hard, you won't need to, it's so light, it shows up really, really easily. And again, I'm just sweeping it on and off, but of course on the left hand side this time, where the light is catching the stalk. That has given us a nice stalk to our orange. And I'm just gonna give a slight nod now to the other leaves around. So if you don't feel particularly confident in your drawing skills, this is where you'd want to have a little bit of a look at my um, video on how to draw. And it will show you how to transfer a drawing from one piece of paper to another, um, effectively tracing a piece of work that you might have done freehand on a piece of sketching paper, um, or you might have printed out your picture of your leaves and you could directly trace the entire outline for this whole um, tutorial straight onto your page so that you know you have a good outline. So I'm just going to sketch the leaves on for a nice open finish to the drawing. I really like to leave my drawings um, with a little bit of an impression that somebody was here doing this. Of course, if you want to fill them in entirely, be my guest. So you can see, just to add some um, shadow to the leaves, I'm being very, very gentle. And I'm using the pencil on the side so that I get these very broad and very even shading marks and not lots of scribbly shading marks that would be very distracting, um, not nearly as soft, and would definitely take our gaze away from the orange. Now, of course, you can draw as many oranges as you like using this exact same technique. The main thing I want people to learn from this class is that when you're doing still lives in pastel pencils or when you're doing still lives in any medium, remember to use warm and cool colours to create enough difference over the form so that it looks nice 3D and edible by the end of it. So that doesn't always mean you would use a warm in the shadow and a cool in the light. As I explained for orange, orange works best if we take it warmer for the shadows because red can be a dark colour. 
whereas when we take it cooler towards yellow, yellow is much better as a lighter colour. If you were drawing something that was green, for example, you could choose um, a little bit more freely. It would work better, of course, to have a more blue green than a yellow green, but you do still get some very intense olive yellow greens at low um, saturations. There's a lovely one from Faber-Castell called 273, and that is very much a sludgy yellow moss green or olive green. And that, of course, it would be a warmer color of green that you could definitely use. And then in the lighter areas, you could be heading almost to work towards a turquoise color, which would be absolutely beautiful. Maybe not for something edible um, turquoise, but certainly if you're doing still life of an object. So I'll just add a couple more half sketched, half not sketched leaves up here. And then this little drawing will be finished. And that is our orange, our still life in pastel pencils finished. So all that's left to do is sign. Always make sure before you sign a drawing that you have a nice clean patch of paper to do it in because it's very tricky to rub out around it. I really hope you have enjoyed this online lesson for how to draw in pastel pencils. And if you have, please leave me a review, a thumbs up um, or a comment below. I'd love to hear what you thought and I'd love to know what you'd like to see from me next. Until next time, Enjoy this tutorial and happy drawing.